from where it's being made, gathered by Network Radio's largest news staff. Here is news around the world from American Information Radio. I'm Bob Walker. Good morning. On this, the 66th day of captivity for the 50 American hostages, the United States is committed to press ahead at the United Nations for sanctions against the Iranian government. But you couldn't blame the hostages for thinking that no one cares much about them at this stage of the game. Chris Powell reports from Tehran. The hostages are in their tenth week of captivity with little or nothing being done to gain their release. The possibility of sanctions isn't far from people's minds, however, but the general feeling is that the Security Council will vote against the U.S. move, in which case America may go it alone and impose sanctions with the support of her allies. This is big power pressure, and observers here say that pressurizing Iran in this way won't work. The Iranians are more likely to give way from a feeling of strength, not weakness. But right now, they are more concerned about the troubles in the provinces than either the hostages or sanctions. Chris Powell, ABC News, Tehran. In Washington, ABC's John Cooley says code machines used for military and diplomatic communications may have been stolen by Soviet agents from the occupied U.S. Embassy in Tehran. Cooley says pictures of the equipment seized at the embassy are now appearing in a paperback book being sold on the streets of Tehran. The U.S., Russia, and Afghanistan. That story coming up. Calm down. Happy's first visit to the vet, Jamie. Oh, she scratched me. Let me see it, Alice. Don't worry. It's hardly noticeable, dear. Oh, good. Just wish I could say that about these age spots on my hands. Well, try porcelana, like Mom did. I thought those spots of hers were fading away. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some. Have to look my best for my trip. Porcelana works on age spots, sun freckles, and those brown spots that can come during childbearing years. Just rub it in. Watch those spots start to fade. Porcelana medicated cream works to lighten brown patches and spots. Actually helps bring back your natural skin tone in just six weeks. Porcelana, available at cosmetic counters in selected stores. Coming! Aunt Alice, how was the trip? Marvelous! Oh my word, look how Tabby's grown. And look at your hands, Aunt Alice. That porcelana really works. Porcelana, just rub it in. Watch brown spots start to fade. Use only as directed. It surely came as no surprise when the Russians exercised their veto power at the United Nations yesterday. The Soviets were saying niet to a resolution condemning their invasion of Afghanistan. And they put the shoe on the other foot by accusing the Security Council of meddling in the affairs of Afghanistan. Meanwhile, President Carter is prepared to take other steps, including military help for Pakistan. We have uh, already assured President Zia, who is the leader of uh, Pakistan, directly with a telephone communication from me the day very shortly after the invasion and since then through emissaries that we're willing to join other nations in giving necessary protection to Pakistan and meet their legitimate defensive uh, military needs. President Carter was interviewed by NBC News. As U.S. relations with the Soviet Union continue to cool, Washington continues to cozy up to the Chinese. John McCarthy has the latest from Peking. Defense Secretary Brown announced from Peking that the U.S. has decided to let China buy a ground station for America's Landsat satellite. The satellite imagery is used by the U.S. for such things as gauging crop yield, assessing damage of massive floods, and prospecting for minerals. The decision to give China access to the satellite's pictures was complicated by the fact that its photographs can also be used to provide crude military reconnaissance. With the growing cooperation between China and the U.S., it was deemed all right to let them have the access. John McWethy, ABC News, Peking. This is American Information Radio. Space engineers continue to have more problems with the space shuttle Columbia. A new five-day test got underway last night in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The trouble popped up before the test started because the simulated engine failed to function. If that problem isn't worked out in time, the make-believe launch will be scrubbed. Astronauts Joe Engel and Richard Trilley were scheduled to climb into the space shuttle cockpit for the mock flight later today. The first space shuttle flight was set for last November, now set for June 30th. But NASA concedes it has only a 10% chance of meeting that deadline. The price of gold tumbled on world bullion markets this morning. Dealers in London and Zurich say they expect the price to continue to fluctuate wildly. In London, gold opened at $605 an ounce, down $25 from yesterday's close. In Zurich, 
opening price six thirty an ounce, down ten dollars from yesterday's opening. I'm Bob Walker, ABC News for American Information Radio, and this is news around the world. The last flight of the last B-29 bomber has been delayed by engine problems. The World War II bomber was due to fly to Loring Air Force Base in Maine yesterday from an air base in Arizona before being donated to the Imperial Air Museum in London. But officials say it may be two weeks or more before the plane will be ready to fly. The B-29 is the type of plane that atom-bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan during the Second World War. In a moment, we'll hear direct reports from Raul Pende in Paris as news around the world continues. The Russian invasion of Afghanistan is likely to increase sharply the refugee problem in neighboring Pakistan. Bill Redeker has a story from Raul Pende. According to government authorities here in Rawalpindi, the number of Afghani refugees in Pakistan could approach one million. Officially, 388,000 refugees have registered for food assistance here, but experts say another 600,000 refugees have never applied. The population of Afghanistan is about 15 million, so that means roughly one out of every 15 Afghanis could now be making his home here in Pakistan. Bill Redeker, ABC News, Rawalpindi, Pakistan. The Japanese are considering several steps to take against Russia because of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Marianne Maskery has that story from Tokyo. For starters, the Japanese government wants to put off a Russian delegation that was supposed to arrive in Tokyo later this month. Officials are asking the Diet to postpone the visit of a group of Soviet legislators. After that, the government is willing to talk about economic measures. The problem is coming up with moves that will hurt the Russians more than the Japanese, and that's not easy. Not when Japanese fishing boats are doing a lucrative business in Russian waters. And Russian troops are based on islands that Japan still hopes to reclaim from the Russians. Even so, there is talk now of suspending some Japanese projects for developing Siberia. This is Marianne Masri, ABC News, Tokyo. America's sometime allies, the French, have decided to go at their own way in the Afghanistan crisis. Bernard Kaplan reports from Paris. France has refused to join the United States in taking economic reprisals against Russia for its actions in Afghanistan because the French see themselves eventually playing a role as intermediaries, just as they did in the Vietnam negotiations. According to French sources, President Giscard d'Estaing has told President Carter that the Soviets face a long and costly guerrilla war in Afghanistan and will eventually seek a way out. Some Western power must stand ready to act as an intermediary, according to Giscard. He reportedly sees himself performing that task. Bernard Kaplan, ABC News, Paris. Almost buried in the news because of the events in Iran and Afghanistan is the summit meeting now going on between Israeli Prime Minister Begin and Egyptian President Sadat. Bill Siemens has a report from Aswan, Egypt. Prime Minister Begin and President Sadat will hold their second meeting today, after which they may hold a joint news conference. At their session yesterday, the crisis in Afghanistan and Iran was the main point of discussion. So vital to Israel and Egypt's security that Begin and Sadat did not even discuss bilateral matters like the West Bank and autonomy. Both have offered the use of military facilities to the United States, but Egyptian Defense Minister General Ali denied that a secret base was being used or being built in Egypt by Americans as reported by Israeli TV news two days ago. Bill Siemens, ABC News, Aswan. In a later report, Egyptian officials now say their Air Force has teamed up with American flyers to test the feasibility of using Egyptian defense facilities. And that's the story from Egypt on news around the world. Labor Secretary Ray Marshall thinks the unemployment rate, now at 5.8%, could rise to more than 6.5% by the middle of this year. But Marshall did say predictions are dangerous. The Labor Secretary also said unemployment will not be as high as some thought because industry is using more labor to offset energy shortages. A good bit of the reason that we're getting the same output uh, with, this, with much less energy is because we're using more labor. And as that happens, you tend to sustain employment much more than you would have if you hadn't had that, that change. And the consequence of that has been to keep unemployment relatively low despite low rates of growth and high rates of increase in energy prices. Marshall says forecasts of a 7% jobless rate by the end of the year are off base. I don't expect it to be as high as the private forecasts have been. And I think there are a lot of things going on that have caused those forecasts to be wrong. Labor Secretary Marshall. A U.S. congressional delegation has been checking out the current situation in South Korea in light of the government shakeup that followed the assassination of President Park Chung-hee. 
Ken Kalier has a report from Seoul. The four representatives, led by New York Democrat Lester Wolf, were the first to visit Korea since the October assassination of Park Chung-hee. They followed a busy 48-hour schedule of what Wolf called open and frank discussions with all segments of the political scene here in Seoul. Wolf said the group found more stability in Korea than they had expected following recent events such as last month's purge by junior army generals here in Seoul. Wolf stressed, however, the importance of maintaining civilian authority and also voiced hopes for free democratic elections as soon as possible. Ken Kalier, ABC News, Seoul. Here at home, Campaign 80 now underway with the presidential hopefuls out looking for some votes. Republican frontrunner Ronald Reagan, who chose to pass up the debate in Des Moines, Iowa last Saturday, spoke at a rally in Davenport, Iowa last night. And Reagan criticized President Carter for his actions regarding the SALT II treaty with the Russians. He has sternly told us that he's going to defer action on SALT II now because he can't trust the Russians. Defer action? Does he mean that someplace down the line he'll decide again that they can be trusted and then he'll give us SALT again? We should reject SALT II, and he should reject it just as publicly as he embraced Brezhnev when they finished signing it. And Reagan says the U.S. never has any contingency plans on how to react after such events as the embassy takeover or the Afghanistan invasion. We just react always after the fact, said the former California governor. Senator Edward Kennedy was also campaigning in Iowa yesterday. Kennedy was asked what he thinks should be the U.S. response regarding Afghanistan. I think what is necessary is a uh, firm uh, response uh, from the United States in terms of our uh, military presence. I think what is essential is that we are going to help our allies in the area and our friends, including uh, Pakistan. And Senator Kennedy said he thinks the embargo on grain sales to Russia will endanger the income of the American farmer and will mean lost markets in the future. A new ABC News Lou Harris survey shows that America's patience with President Carter's handling of the Iranian crisis is beginning to wear a bit thin. White House reaction to that survey is reported by Bettina Gregory. News Secretary Jody Powell was philosophic about the latest ABC News Harris poll, saying one of the president's favorite quotations is from Harry Truman, who said, any president who makes decisions based on public opinion polls and political commentators isn't worthy of the office. Powell added, obviously there'll be an ebb and flow of public opinion based on recent events in Iran. But he cautioned the president has to make decisions based on the long-term interest of our nation and on the safety of the hostages. So the White House would have us believe President Carter is immune to the sting of polls like this one, which show Americans' patience and unity is wearing thin. Bettina Gregory, ABC News, the White House. This is the second day in a row that trading on grain futures has been suspended, a presidential order designed to cushion the impact of the Russian embargo. And the Julie Eckert reports it was awfully quiet at the Chicago market yesterday. The Chicago Board of Trade opened as usual, but the pits where they trade corn, wheat, and soybeans were empty. Traders who would normally be shouting and running were sitting and reading. The only dealing going on was in an occasional card game. Trading was suspended in the major grain futures markets out of fear that traders would overreact to the Soviet embargo and prices would drop drastically. Grain prices can fluctuate $150 million daily. It was hoped that prices would stabilize if the government had a chance to explain how it would help farmers. Julie Eckert, ABC News, Chicago. And that's a story from Chicago on News Around the World. diamond store, you not only have the confidence to buy a diamond, but the money too. It's our sensational sales sale, where you can save on selected items of great beauty, diamonds naturally, and diamond watches. And gold too, from rings to earrings, pins to pendants, even a select group of famous name watches. Now you know why our sensational sales sale is so sensational. No one knows more than the diamond store largest jeweler with eight ways to buy, including sales on credit. And the diamond store is Now the ups and downs of the weather with ABC weatherman John Coleman in Chicago. Coldest morning of the year in North Dakota, 25 below zero at Williston at dawn, 11 below zero in South Dakota, Huron, and at Warsaw, Wisconsin. 
A cold front pushing into the southeast today will trigger rain and showers in the Carolinas and Georgia and Alabama. But it will stay out of Florida for the most part, where the sunny skies will produce highs in the mid-70s over the southern half of the state. Meanwhile, the high winds of yesterday have ended around the Great Lakes, but the snow flurries continue from Michigan to New York State. A few showers are dotting southern California, but it's in the Pacific Northwest where the weather is most unusual. Snow is falling throughout Washington, most of Oregon, throughout Idaho, and a good part of Montana at dawn, southward into Wyoming, and continuing in the mountains of Colorado, where travel advisories have been issued. The snow will be heavy in western Washington today and pick up through the day in Idaho. John Coleman, ABC News, Chicago. This is Bob Walker, and this has been News Around the World on the American Information Radio Network, a service of ABC News.